Welcome to Abby's Coaching House, your home of transformation. This is the space where we challenge ourselves to unleash our full God-given potential. We focus on moving from just ordinary people to extraordinary people with extraordinary results. My name is Coach Blessed Abby, your Mindset Transformation Coach. I believe that once you transform your mindset, your life changes for the better. For those who've been here for a long time, thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you for your support, for every like you give to our videos, for every share, for every comment. I really appreciate I love interacting with you through the comments because I also get to learn and I also get to know what you would like to hear from me. So thank you so much. If you're new here, it's your first time to interact with us. Thank you so much for joining us. A big welcome to you. Please consider joining us by subscribing to this channel and also hitting the notification bell so that the next time we upload a video, you are among the first people to know. Today we talk about mental discipline, a topic that is very dear to my heart. What is mental discipline? I would call it the ability to regulate your thoughts, your emotions, your behaviors in a very intentional manner. Just the ability to control how you think. You see, we all have tendencies to either think positively or think negatively. And so some of us have this tendency to overthink towards the positive side others towards the negative side and you realize that the quality of your thoughts will actually impact the quality of your life i was this person who had this tendency to always think negatively whenever something would happen i would think towards the worst i would see the worst of outcomes and one thing i know is that what you always think about you attract so the quality of your life is highly dependent on the quality of your thoughts. So let's see what are the benefits of being a mentally disciplined person. One of them is emotional well-being. There is this equation that says that emotions are affected by your thoughts. So it begins from your thoughts, then your thoughts affect your emotions, and then your emotions will affect the actions and the decisions that you take. Most of us, when we are affected or when we, something happens in our lives, there is a thought pattern that we are used to. Let's take an example of a marriage relationship or just a relationship. And so a spouse begins to think doubtful thoughts towards their spouse. And so these thoughts will bring about negative emotions. And these negative emotions will result into negative actions or poor decisions. But on the vice versa, if a spouse has positive thoughts towards their partner, then they will tend to be happy, they will have these positive emotions that will lead to wonderful decisions. So our emotional well-being is highly dependent on the quality of thoughts that we entertain in our minds. And remember, we have a choice of what thoughts we decide to allow into our minds. And so they, we don't have to let every thought come in. M many people think that they are helpless when it comes to what they think. But let me tell you, you are not helpless. You can stop your thinking. If, even if you're used to a certain thinking pattern that goes towards the negative, you can always change it for the positive. The second benefit of being a mentally disciplined person is improved focus. The moment my thoughts are in line with where I want to go, then I'm able to focus. I'm able to be a focused mother, a focused worker, a, fo a focus in everything, focused in my business, focus in my relationship. So being a mentally disciplined person will help you to stay focused. And remember, anytime you're focused, then you're able to have the results that you're looking for. The third benefit is reduction of stress and anxiety. As we have said, 
our emotions are, are rooted deeply into our thoughts. Once we are able to regulate our thoughts, then our levels of stress and anxiety will go down because for you to be stressed and anxious, these are thoughts that trigger that whole process. So once you're able to master being a mentally disciplined person, then your levels of stress and anxiety will significantly go down or you even get to a point where you overcome stress and become a peaceful person internally. What strategies can you put in place for you to be a mentally disciplined person? One is stay focused. Focus on what you want. That is one statement that has kept me going all through. That I choose to focus on what I want. Let me still use the example of a marriage. If in my marriage I want to be happy, then I will focus on the outcome that I want to have. Remember we have said before that what you focus on grows. So if you focus on the negative, your mind is always focused on the negative, then whatever you are focusing on, that negative thought pattern is what you will have growing in your life. So master the art of focusing on what you want. Ask yourself, is this what I want? No. So do I want to take my thoughts in that direction? No. And once you're able to ask yourself such empowering questions, then you get to a place where you redirect your thoughts to the direction that you want, the direction of strong thoughts that make you strong, make you powerful, and you take control of your thoughts. You're no longer a victim, but a victor over your thoughts. The second strategy is practice mindfulness. What is mindfulness? It's the art of being present in everything that you do. When you're eating, be present. You know, sometimes in everything that we do, we are in a hurried world, so we tend to just be in a hurry to finish tasks and move ahead to the next thing. But when we focus mindfulness, we are able to, you know, be absorbed in whatever we are doing. And that gives us that sense of peace. There are also practices that help you to improve your mindfulness. Meditation is one of them that really works perfectly to help you significantly to improve your focus, your mindfulness, and your emotional and mental health. Deep breathing is also another powerful uh, practice to have where you just breathe in and breathe out and you center and ground yourself. That way you're able to arrest your thought pattern and bring it back to order. The third strategy is positive affirmations. And you know I'm a fan of this. Remember last year when we were doing our gratitude challenge, we learned about this. I will link it onto this video. P positive affirmations are such a powerful way of helping you to redirect your thought patterns from the negative to the positive. You know, they work on your subconscious mind and just help you. If you are a person who is deeply rooted into negative thinking patterns, positive affirmations are powerful. Like if you're this person who constantly think that I am not worth of this, I am not good enough, I can't do this, and then you, you know, reverse that to I can do this, I am worthy, I am enough. Then you get to a place where you begin to believe it. Remember your mind does not know the difference between you uh, saying you're enough. At first you may not really believe it, but then eventually your mind takes it as normal. And so when you begin to believe it, then it affects your mental patterns. So you begin to think in terms of the positive more than the negative. And then finally, is just being realistic with our goals. Because sometimes we set goals that are not realistic at all. In my other video we, where we talked about effective goal setting, I say that most people uh, think of so many things that they can do in a very short time, but then when they fail to do them, they get frustrated. And then they begin to feel inefficient, they begin to feel unworthy, they begin to feel like they are not good enough. So when you're setting your goals, uh, think about it. Is this really realistic? Is it something I'm able to do within this time frame? 
refer to the previous video on effective goal setting i will link it here so that you are able to see and gauge yourself is the are the goals i'm setting realistic have i planned for them have i given them a time frame how am i planning to achieve them which strategies am i putting into place that will help you to avoid the negative thoughts because when you reach this point and your thoughts begin to go to the direction that tells you i cannot do this this is too hard then that affects your emotions it affects your health and then it has this very negative uh, effect on your total well-being what are the obstacles or what i like calling roadblocks towards you being a mentally disciplined person one of them is wrong company imagine yourself being this person who spends time with people who always talk negative who always influence you to think negatively it would be impossible for you to be a mentally disciplined person so it's important to check who are the people that surround me who are the people i interact with every day what is their impact on my thinking patterns what are their impact on my emotional well-being once you see that you you be able to see do i need to drop this company do i need to keep it what do i need to do am i also the contributor towards the negative or the positive what do i need to change so that whatever i i contribute towards my social circles is in the positive the other thing is long term negative thinking patterns some of us right from childhood have been rooted in negative thinking patterns you see like i i, I have said before everything that we are we have learned we were not born thinking negatively look at a child do they ever have negative thoughts where did you learn your negative thoughts from that is something to ask yourself and so when you go back to the roots and check where did this thought pattern come from then you're able to address it remember self awareness is one powerful thing that you must have in your transformational journey as somebody said that being self aware solves almost half of your problems because you're much worse if you are having these negative patterns and you're not even aware so if you are rooted into negative thinking patterns in my coaching program we we say you are negatively coded then you need to think about it and see what do i need to do about this and so in my coaching program we help you to see you first identify them what are these negative codes that i have and how then then do i transform them to the positive and once you do that you transform into a powerful thinker a person who is coded powerfully and a person who is coded with the positive codes that empower them uh, empowering codes that make them stronger people thirdly is impatience and i i really have been a victim to this you know where you want results to come immediately and once they don't come you sit down and begin to wonder am i really doing anything here am i really achieving anything is this really working and the moment i find myself thinking that my emotions are immediately affected and so i have learned to master not allowing myself to go that direction practicing patience in my life knowing that it's the baby steps that i put into my work or my life every day that count like say you are thinking of losing weight and then you go to the gym once or twice and then you you begin to think i'm just feeling the pain in my joints and i'm not gain, gaining anything and then you feel so discouraged and you stop so we have to learn the art of being patient knowing that every good thing comes with time so what we need to practice here is consistency put in consistent efforts every day and know that you're headed in the right direction get the guidance that you need where you need to but then ask yourself 
do I want, uh, am I working for long term results or just short term? If it's long term results, then you need to be patient with yourself. The other roadblock is negative self-talk and doubts. What do you tell yourself? You know, sometimes we have this tendency to sit down and just tell ourselves very negative things. So what do you tell yourself when you are alone? You know, sometimes you are really our worst enemies, that we don't even need someone else to come and tell us how bad we are. We already tell us and give ourselves a huge dose of how bad we are. So check your thinking pattern. Ask yourself, what am I telling myself? Am I my own friend? Is what I'm telling myself something I would want something, somebody else to tell me? Or would I even tell it to someone else? You see, some of us tell ourselves things that we can't even tell anyone else. And that's being so unkind to yourself. So practice being kind to yourself and talk to yourself positively. The things that you would even want someone else to talk to you about. The other obstacle is fear of change. One of the things I have had to learn is that change happens every now and then. And so I have had to sometimes affirm that I love change, that I'm comfortable with change, that change is good for me. You see, when change is inevitable, uh, sitting down and thinking about how terrible this change is. For example, you are in a workplace and then you are transferred to another town and you don't like it. And those thoughts bombard you, you are wondering, how can I go there? How could they do this? How? Why me? You know, especially that question, why me? At some point I had to ask myself, if not me, then who else? Because if I'm thinking why me, then it means it had to, I, I'm thinking it should have been someone else. So it's important to accept change as part of life. You never know, maybe on the other side, something good awaits you. So trust life, trust the process, and know that you are thought of in the mind of God. So whatever happens in your life, trust the process. And at the end of the day, you will see something positive come out of it. And lastly, I think this is something that uh, affects many women and sometimes some men is low self-worth. Sometimes thinking of ourselves as these people who are unworthy. So we keep thinking negative thoughts about ourselves, feeling that we don't deserve this, we don't deserve that. This is something we will discuss in another video that we'll do just about self-worth. But think about it, what value do you tag to yourself? Because it could affect your thinking patterns. Why is it important to be a mentally disciplined person? Why is it important to discipline your thought patterns? You know, you attract what you think often. Think about it. Every negative thing that happens in your life, if you trace back, you will see that you once thought about it, had the fear of it coming to you. And did you know that we actually attract the things that we fear, that thing that you fear so much? Is it Job in the Bible that says, the thing I feared most is what came upon me. Remember this guy was so afraid, he used to make daily sacrifices for his children so that they would not be destroyed, but then they were destroyed, he lost everything. So that thing that you fear so much, you actually attract it to yourself. So drop the fears, drop the negative thought patterns. I have been reading this in books and recently I read it in a book that said that most of what happens in our lives is first preconceived in our minds. Sometimes we blame people for doing things to us, yet that is our worldview. That is how we see the world. If we see people as bad, then we tend to attract and meet negative people. We tend to attract and meet negative circumstances. So why don't you change your thinking patterns to the positive and be this magnet that attracts to yourself things that you like, things that you really want for yourself. Because what you keep processing every day and every day in your mind 
you finally get it coming to you. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has been, if you've liked what we've been sharing, please leave us a thumbs up. Let me hear what you think at the comment section. Let's interact. Let me also learn from you. And remember to subscribe and also share to somebody who may need to hear this. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's meet again when we do another video on helping each other to become better and better every day. Bye.